Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. During this blessed season of hospitality, we hear this gospel passage concerning the paralytic, who is a sheep, a sheepskate, a sheepskate, a fool. And we marvel at the great miracle which used to take place on an annual occasion. For a certain, at a certain season, an angel would descend and trouble the water, and the water would shake. And then the first person among the multitude of sick folk that would go into the water, after the shaking of the water, was healed. And so this paralytic was there for 38 years, and during and gaining for himself crowns in paradise. Not too many days ago, we celebrated the feast of the Holy Prophet Job. And we heard concerning that dialogue which took place between the Most High, our God, and the devil from scriptures. And the devil dared to tempt him. And God permitted it. He dared to tempt Job, and by the permission of God, he did because <coughs> God, who knows all things, of course, knew that Job would be proven to be a true soldier of Jesus Christ, one who patiently endured, but one who had the right attitude in all of the temptations. And this is the key factor in the right attitude. But many times, when we are in the midst of our temptations, we have a bad attitude to speak in simple language. And our bad attitude, of course, is provoked by our pride. We think that perhaps we think we deserve better than this. We have not come to understand that this life, as I was telling somebody yesterday, is the veil of tears. And we prepare for ourselves some type of a earthly kingdom, our empire. And then before our very eyes, everything falls apart. Only because we have not come to understand that this life is temporary. And now we're talking about the vast majority of people. We have not really come close enough to God to understand how real He is and how true all those things which He tells us is. And so in the midst of the temptations, Job said, The Lord giveth, the Lord taketh away. As it seemed well pleasing to the Lord, so had it come to pass. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And in that statement, Job proved himself to be a true follower of God, but also because of that statement and that confession of faith which he made before those who would have cursed God, he had received a great deal of grace. He had come a lot closer to God, and he had come to understand things a lot more. He was given understanding, knowledge. So now we have an example of somebody who for 38 years endured, and he didn't give up. And you remember that I've said, and I continually say, that the success, the key to success in spiritual life is diligent persistence. So this man was diligently persistent for 38 years. He didn't give up. Faint-heartedness is a passion to sin. People become faint-hearted because they lose their patience. And in our modern culture and in our fallen nature, we want things at our fingertips. We want things ready for us at all times. We want to make life so easy. When we talked about the Desert Fathers and how they would travel for miles to fetch their water, it seems so strange for us because walking ten, ten steps is too much for us even. And so, the visitation of the Lord came. The moment came. The moment that He was waiting for. Something much more blessed, something much more 
valuable and important than just the shaking of the water. But God Himself descended, He became man, and He visited this paralytic, as He visited many of the sick. Some people ask, why is it that we don't have such miracles as we used to have in the old days? And I think a lot of those people are not looking. They are not searching. And truly, there are. Whether they are worked by God alone, or whether they are worked by God's servants, of course, God Himself is doing the work. And of course, in that case, those servants of God try to hide the grace and the virtue and the miraculous help which the Lord sends. But yesterday we had this priest of St. Nicholas of Hunen, of Hunen. St. Nicholas is a martyr from the area, the region of Thessalia in Greece. He was martyred on a tree, and every year on his feast day, many faithful gather because an amazing phenomenon takes place, of course, with the church calendar. Red liquid comes out of the tree where he was martyred, which the faithful call blood. But it is a red liquid. People anoint themselves with it. People gather the liquid. They put a drop in water, and the saint cures them in Christ Jesus our Lord. So now, when our Savior asks this paralytic, would you like me to make you whole? He says, Sir, the word here is Kirian, which could also mean Lord. I have no man. I have no man to put me into the water. In other words, as we said, after the troubling of the water, the first person who stepped in would be healed, and this man was a paralytic, so naturally he couldn't step in. He needed somebody to put him in. He was helpless. He needed someone. Sir, I have no man. And the church, which is the voice of Christ, in the theology of the church, says something very beautiful in theology. We hear, and we heard last night, How can you say you have no man? For thy sake, I became a man, says our Lord. Now this paralytic, of course, is representing mankind. And our Lord says to him, you cannot say, I have no man. For thy sake, I became a man. God becomes man in order to heal broken man. So we have the time to say, man is broken. Man is lost so often. He needs to face this reality. He can't live the life of delusion. He can't paint for himself a portrait which is disconnected with reality, with the reality of the way things actually are. And the devil is a professional at that particular thing, delusion, which the Pharisees were deeply infected with. So because of his delusion and persistence, he was visited by our Lord himself. And our Lord made him whole, and it was the Sabbath day, the day of rest. And our Lord says, take up your bed and walk. Now this man who could hardly walk on his feet, takes up his bed now. He doesn't just simply walk, but again, he puts extra weight. He's able to do it. He's been given this great strength. And then, of course, comes the next challenge. The Pharisees asked him, Why are you walking like that? Why did you take why are you carrying your bed? Don't you know it's the Sabbath day? And the man answers, He that made me whole told me to do so. You see, the paralytic who was healed was also obedient. He didn't say, Why are you telling me to do this? He didn't say it's the Sabbath day, I'm not supposed to do this. He accepted the word of the Lord, he was obedient. But the Pharisees, on the other hand, being so infected with their delusion, as we say, it, it wouldn't matter for them, even if they were to see one rise from the dead, they could see the greatest of miracles. They were so darkened, they would not accept it. 
So here we have the examples set before us of what we should be like and what we shouldn't be like. Of the right attitude and the wrong attitude. In the midst of our temptations, let us look at the great example of Job, whose life we can never emulate because he was a great a great servant and a great soldier of Jesus Christ, of our Lord. And he said, Glory be to God. Glory be to the glory be to God. Who can enumerate all of those horrible things that happened to him. And meanwhile, the smallest little thing makes us so bent on shape. And we, we just lose ourselves, we lose sight of reality. We live in this delusion. So the church calls us to jump out of that delusion and take a look at the Pharisees. Our Lord worked another miracle, yet another miracle, and they would not accept him. They were afraid that if he would work more miracles, he would gain more popularity. And it couldn't be that Jesus Christ was the Messiah for them because he questioned them. How dare he question us? It's like saying how dear God question us, basically. Same applies in our spiritual lives. Let us not be too presumptuous, let us not be presumptuous. Let us jump out of these delusions, and the only way that we can do it is through our Lord Himself. He came down for us. You cannot say, I have no one to help me. He is our helper. And we must look at the example of the paralytic also because of his patience and because of his patient endurance. He received that which he was longing for. And in every case, our Lord looks to heal us spiritually because these things will pass very fast. Imagine God, who has no beginning, who has no end, looking at this small little speck of time in our lives. What exactly does it mean? It's going to pass so fast. And so this is why God always looks to help us understand things from the spiritual point of view. And he says to the paralytic, after his healing, Behold, thou art made whole, sin no more. And that's a challenge. That is a challenge. Because we all know that our nature is prone to sin. So what do we do about it? We must follow those things which the Holy Fathers have told us, but which we, if we follow those things which the Holy Fathers tell us to do, will know to be true. We must continuously live a life of repentance. As St. Simeon of Theologian says, repentance, tears of repentance, by the second baptism. It's the only way that we can be healed of our infirmities. And that's why, looking at this example today, we see water once again. Water cleanses, and so do tears. Not tears of feeling sorry for yourself. Not tears which are simply emotional. But tears which plead before the Master Jesus Christ <clears throat> for aid, for help. Tears which lift up those who are fallen. Repentance. And in this way, we will become whiter than snow. And we will behold our Savior, because the heart must be cleansed in order to see Him, creating a clean heart for God, we say in the 50th Psalm. And we will behold this holy resurrection, and we will understand what we are chanting and what we are reading in the knowledge of the church. And we say, Let us, who have beheld the resurrection of Christ, worship our holy Lord Jesus. And the first hymn that we chant, Let us purify our senses, and we shall behold Christ, radiant with the unapproachable light. And we shall hear him say, Rejoice. He passes on to us his joy. This joy may the Lord grant unto us in the age to come, that we may rejoice with all those who have been well pleasing to the Lord from ages past, and that we may rejoice in the presence of His brother, the angels, the saints, and finally that we may rejoice 
in the one God alone, the one God in Trinity, to whom be glory, honor, and adoration, and to the ages of ages. Amen. <laughs>